Can you even believe this? Canon announced a dream lens, a lens that we've never ever seen before. This goes from 24 millimeters all the way to 105 millimeters at f2.8, but it doesn't stop there. It's an RF lens that is also image stabilized. That's mind blowing. That's what we're going to talk about today. So let's jump right on in and watch the announcement video from Canon, and I'll stop and give you guys sort of my commentary and opinion as we go along. Hi everyone, I'm Rudy Winston with Canon USA. Canon is launching an incredible professional lens for video and still image shooters. The fact that this lens exists, can I just tell you the flexibility, and some of you know this already, but like I love the 24, to 105 f4 version of this lens this is also image stabilized i use it on my komodo cameras i use it on my canon cameras i have two of them i have the original ef version that also gets used i really do love that lens because of its flexibility that range from 24 to 105 gives you an incredible amount of flexibility when you're out shooting with a small crew or by yourself so let's continue. And it's a lens the industry has never seen before. Fact, before we were always needing to understand that our limitations stopped at 70 millimeters. If we wanted an F 2.8 lens, right? So we could get 24 to 70, but we could never go beyond that. And then the wider version goes from 16 to 35, right? So we never had something that went beyond 70 millimeters at f2.8 in a zoom lens that was image stabilized and was also an L lens. And yes, L lenses are obviously better than the non-L versions. The Canon RF 24 to 105 millimeter f2.8 L IS USM Z is an incredible standard zoom solution for so many different applications with its constant f2.8 maximum aperture. The fact that this lens allow us to stay at f2.8 regardless of the focal length. When Rudy says it's available or it's ideal for so many applications, imagine the freedom that you have when you're able to shoot wide open at f2.8 at 24 millimeters all the way up to a, say, a portrait or interview shot at 105 millimeters, and they're all consistent at f2.8. What that really means to you and me is that we have the ability to spend less money on our lighting budgets. And if we're solo shooters or very small crew shooters, or shooters that effectively motivate available light in situations where we might be traveling we can travel with less kit. That is worth a lot of money, in my opinion, which is one of the reasons why I'm really excited about this lens. Full frame coverage and its ability to zoom right past the traditional 70 millimeter roadblock to a true portrait length 105 millimeters. Especially in low light, this lens will excel for weddings and events, photojournalism, portraiture, studio work, and of course, video creation. I can't tell you how many times we've had to travel across the world, whether it be Japan, Australia, South America, um, Ireland, and, and you name it, other different places in Europe, all over the US, into Canada, where we were limited by what we are able to physically carry. And when you're traveling with just, you know, let's say a crew of three to get a project completed, or get a commercial shot done, or work on promo videos for a specific organization, and so on and so forth, and needing to be able to do everything from create social media content, capture B-roll for commercial products or projects that will be part of this bundle that you're working on, having a tool that give you the flexibility to be able to go from, we're doing an interview, to we're shooting B-roll, to we are capturing social media content, and everything in between. This lens 
will absolutely accomplish that for a company like mine. An optional, dedicated power zoom adapter, PZ-E2, is being announced with this lens, and it transforms the video operation possibilities with its smooth and versatile zooming. Here's one thing I haven't heard, and I didn't hear the first time that I watched this video. I'll say that I personally have not used a zoom rocker or zoom switch on any lens since probably 2006, 2009, somewhere in that range. So this lens being able to do that isn't as important to me or, or the, the Z zoom rocker adapter thing, whatever. It's not a rocker, it's just a switch. Um, I'm not sure that that's like a deal breaker or something that is a huge selling point for me. But the fact that it can do it, I think that that brings it that much closer to blurring the lines between broadcast work, commercial work, and then all of the in-between stuff that happens where people like you and I are often caught in. So I think that that's important. What I wanted to say that, I, again, I haven't heard, and maybe he'll say it here down the line here in the video, but is it par focal? Is the lens par focal? Because if it's par focal, then that makes this lens like on a different level altogether, right? It covers full frame, which means it will work with my R5C. My Canon C70 will not take advantage of the full frame because it can't. My Komodo or Komodo X, those cameras will also, again, not be able to take advantage of the full frame coverage. So it's a little bit of a waste there. But this might be the ideal piece of kit for V Raptor. So the red V Raptor or whatever other camera that Canon decides to release that's full frame. That's pretty cool. If it is par focal, then it will be an ideal and maybe even a must have lens for a red V Raptor owner. If it is not par focal, then you could say you could go in a different direction and spend a lot more money to get the par focal version of a lens that also has the lens quality similar to what Canon is able to provide in this lens. On Canon cameras though, and this is the part where it gets really, really blurry, and it's amazing that technology is getting to the point where it can actually be that blurry, but if it is not par focal, does it really matter on cameras like the Canon C70, the C300, Oh, I'm sorry, that, that's not RF, and neither is the C500 Mark II. So really doesn't matter on cameras like the Canon C70, the Canon R5, or the Canon R5C, because the focus, autofocus features on those cameras is absolutely mind-blowing, incredible, and of course, it does eye detection. So do I need a lens like this to be par focal if I am already shooting on a Canon camera? And the question is, we got it, or the answer is, we have to test it to see what it's like to go from the wide end all the way to the telephoto end and how fast, which of course we all know, you could change the settings and the speed of the autofocus on Canon cameras to keep up to where it will allow the lens to behave as if it was par focal. Because we already know that Canon is going to, in the image processing, automatically correct for the breathing, right? In the software. So I'm sure that all the cameras will get some sort of software update or firmware update that will allow the lens to then communicate effectively with the camera so that as you are zooming, you don't see the focus breathing that we normally see on say something like the 24 to 70 F2, which is one of the big hangups for a lot of different people. But enough talking, let's get back to the video. A manual aperture control ring is a prominent feature allowing super fine manual control without click stops during video operation. More than ever. I wish every single RF lens gave us the ability to control the iris without any clicks, without having to do it in the software, just like what Rudy said on this lens. That's awesome. That by itself, in my opinion, makes this lens 
that much more valuable. For many different types of jobs, still and video users can potentially work with a single lens. This L-series lens focuses down to 1.5 feet, and it's... That's not a bad close focusing distance. It's not quite macro, but you know, a foot and a half is not bad. Also, being able to have such a wide focal length allow us to call for, you know, an establishing shot, a wide shot, a medium shot, a cowboy shot, and you could go right on down the line all the way to a close-up or an extreme close-up with a lens like this that makes it so that when you are on set, you don't need to tear down your set to set up for the next type of shot that you want. In other words, the set could be set up, you go in a wide shot for the entire sequence, and then you could ba basically reset to start and then do get your medium shot and then reset to start again and get all your tight shots that you might need on that sequence without ever moving the camera's position if you don't need it. Of course, if you're on, if you have the budget and you're on something like a techno crane, you're still able to repeat and get all of those different variety of shots without ever touching the camera other than changing the focal length of the lens. That is mind blowing, super effective and functional, and I'm really excited about it. It's 23 element design is highlighted by four ultra low dispersion glass elements and three aspherical elements. Image stabilization gives up to 5.5 stops correction. Okay, 5.5 stops of image stabilization correction on a camera like the Komodo or Komodo X with a global shutter. <laughs> you all have heard me say this before, but motion on a global shutter is beautiful. Action on a mobile on a global shutter is beautiful. Having the addition of image stabilization in the lens, yes and thank you. Absolutely. Self or up to eight stops with coordinated IS. Two nano U. Okay, so coordinated IS must be referring specifically to the R5 since the R5C does not have IBIS, which really means <laughs> I should have kept my R5. <laughs> it is what it is. USM focus motors mean brisk AF performance and a floating optical design ensures excellent close-up image quality. Okay, I have no idea what this floating optical design means, but I'm guessing it helps with the IS, it, it must, right? And I will say that the faster motors on the RF lenses and even the L lenses, they make a difference because it allows for the autofocus to work that much smoother and keep the attention on what you want the attention to be kept. So I think that that's really good. But again, I have no idea what this floating optical design is. If any of you know, leave a comment. All zooming and focusing is internal. The lens length or balance never changes. Okay, that was an interesting point. So I like the fact that the lens is not telescopic, right? So it doesn't get wider, you know, like, so that's telescopic. The lens is changing its physical size because I am at a different focal length. So I like the fact that the lens will always be one size. But what Rudy just said was that the balance will not change. How are they accomplishing that? I have no idea, but that also then means that if this lens was mounted on the camera and a gimbal, you don't have to recalibrate the gimbal or rebalance the gimbal or the gimbal head, depending on what whatever application you're, you're on. That's, again, Canon helping your workflow when you're, you know, in the weeds, in the, in the heart of a production, just be that much more efficient and faster because we all know Time on set is burning money. And if we could reduce that time on set, we are allowed to keep a little bit more profit in our pockets. And it's sealed against dust and moisture. And for video users, it has good correction for focus breathing. Sealed against dust and moisture, that's pretty cool. So it's not weatherproof. So it's not like, you know, I'm guessing it's not going to be able to take rain on the lens, which is fine because cameras like 
The R5C, they have a vent, which obviously they're not weather sealed. So that's not what they're made for. Make no mistake, this is a large lens, roughly the size and weight of a traditional 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8. So the lens being roughly the same size and weight of a traditional 70 to 200 millimeter lens, it's not light, but it's not super heavy. It's not a walk around lens, so it, it's not that. And if I was shooting an event, I probably would want a monopod with me for extra support particularly if it's going to be more than a four hour or five hour event, but it's not too heavy for me to not want to carry it. So I don't mind both the size and the weight so far. I guess it depends on which camera I'm using. I probably would want to pair that lens more with something like my R5C than I would with say a Komodo X if I was shooting an event and I was moving around trying to get multiple types of shots. But what this really sounds like to me is that this lens can go from being a stills lens to being a video focused lens, which really means it's made for a hybrid shooter and maybe a hybrid type camera instead of just a video dedicated camera like the C70. And if they made it specifically to pair with the R5C, I think they hit a grand slam. And I think that all of us who shoot on more than just the R5C, are gonna reap the benefits of this type of solution. A new tripod mount design simplifies mount removal or attachment with a press of one button. And for use in rigs, an optional lens holder, LHE1, offers excellent lens support. Okay, the fact that they thought about a lens holder, right, so stabilizing the lens because of the weight, the length, and so on, for something like a, a rig or a gimbal, makes me think that they legitimately are looking at this as a potential owner operator type lens for all of us, all of the people who maybe were on the fence about buying their flex zooms. And this is how Canon is looking out for us. I mean, this looks like a terrific buy for someone like me and the type of work and production that I'm involved in on a daily basis. So again, I'm, I'm just kind of hyped and excited. For decades, advanced users have dreamed of a 24 to 105 millimeter lens with an f2.8 maximum aperture. It's not a dream any longer. I'll say this, if it was f2, I would be jumping off my seat. f2.8, I am thankful, very happy, and I will be buying this lens. <laughs> I will be buying this lens. And once it's available, I will be doing making some videos so if you're interested in that type of content be sure to subscribe but i am excited this is a dream lens at a price that is unmatched it's just like no one else has this type of lens available for us and definitely not at this price point i'm really looking forward to see what else canon has in the works for canon usa i'm rudy winston that's one hell of an announcement. That's one hell of a leap forward in technology and offering in a way that from, from someone like me, in my opinion, it shows that Canon truly understands the workflow challenges, restrictions, and perspective, as well as the need to create high quality content at volume for very small crews like you and I, which is one of the reasons why this lens will be part of my kit in the near future. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button so that the algorithm lets other people know that, hey, you're kind of enjoying the video and you enjoy this type of content. Maybe somebody else similar to you might find it also interesting. And I'll catch up with all of you in the next one. I'm Carlos, take care.